I want to thank many of you folks that have sent in comments about uh, our videos and including some of the requests that you've asked for. One that I think is very important and that was how do we address lapping the centers? How do we do it? Uh, we're going to give you a primer on it. We're going to give you an idea how we do it and how important it is. It is really, really critical. I can't begin to tell you how important the centers are, particularly if you're concerned about concentricity where you've got to get this diameter concentric with that diameter. But it's just important in general to keep the centers clean. And of course, the first thing you need to do is to prepare them. So there's a number of ways of doing it. Glenn, can you get a good shot of that there? <clears throat> I'm right on it. Good. That's a lapping stone that you can use in a lathe. Or, or even a drill press provided you have a center at the bottom end. In this case, you can see how this stone would fit this particular diameter. Got a good shot there? Turn yes, sir. Yeah, like, there you go. Good. Or <clears throat> if you have a smaller diameter like this, we can use a smaller stone, obviously. And I think these are about 120 grit or 150 grit, somewhere in that area. But you can find them in the catalog houses. They're available all over the place. The other one that we use is carbide. Now, what's the advantages? What are the advantages between carbide and uh, using a stone? The stone is going to be a whole lot less money. This is roughly $10, $15, something like that. The carbide is up there. It could be in this size, I'm just guessing, but probably 150, 200 bucks, somewhere in that area. This, of course, is not going to be anywhere near that kind of money. Got a good shot of that, bud? Yeah. All right. One of the things we ought to talk about with carbide is that when you're using carbide on centers, particularly the large ones, it tends to make a little steel chip. Now, remember, it's going to come off a hardened steel. And those little chips are nasty little guys, and they'll get into your fingers or the palm of your hand. But there is a way to fix that, and this is an interesting tip, and you can use this on any kind of small slivers. I like to use Gorilla Tape because it's really sticky. So if you get a sliver in your finger, just do that about four or five times, and nine times out of ten, it'll pull the sliver out of your finger. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> what if you had a large diameter like this, and we had a split center like so. And supposing we had a piece of dirt in there, and I put a piece of clay in there just so you can get an idea of a piece of dirt. Now I've exaggerated that, and obviously it's not going to be anything like that, but I wanted to make a point. So as this comes around, it would act like a cam. It would bump on, make its turn, bump off. Well, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have a egg shape or at least out of, it wouldn't be egg shape, but it would be out of concentricity. So it's very, very important that there is no debris in the center and that you lap it accordingly. You lap it to make sure you get a good fit for the center. We're going to go up back. We're going to give you an idea about how we lap them. Now, in the case of the stones, we've got, do you know what a Logan lathe is, Glenn? No, I don't. Well, the one we got back there was born before you were. I can assure you of that. <laughs> but uh, it's a good use for a piece of equipment that's, that's outdated. And we took the carriage off of it. It's a lathe, and we took the carriage off of it to give us some room to work. So we use that for lapping. Now, we do not have the ability to dress the stone there. So we take the stone, and we put it on a surface grinder with a diamond wheel, and we dress it over there. So we dress several of them. We keep them in stock and we can put them on the lathe and go ahead and do our thing. So we'll go in the back and we're going to show you how we lap centers. So you've already gotten the importance of it, right, Glenn? You understand why we need to do it. Oh, yeah. So let's head back there and we're going to show you how we lap the centers. All right, so the first one that we're going to lap is this larger diameter with the carbide. Now, frankly, I'm not a big fan of the carbide and let me tell you why. It tends to chatter if you don't get the speed just right. But secondly, it produces a little chip that gets in your freaking fingers and in your hands, and I just don't need to deal with that. But the carbide does last longer, and uh, you don't have to fuss with it quite as much as you do with, uh, with a stone. But I'll give you an idea what it's like to lap it. 
So, I love this old lathe, look at that. This lathe is older than you, Glenn. But, it's kind of cool. See what I mean? Right there? Yeah. That's one of the things I don't like about carbide. It's okay for smaller diameters. But you know, we got a decent finish, it's not that bad. But it's not my first choice. So, let's do the same thing with a different stone. We'll get rid of the carbide and we'll set the stone in there. I personally like this a lot better. I think you get a better finish and again, you don't have to deal with the chips. Oh, I love this lathe. I just love it. I'll back it off just a bit. See how easy that is? A lot smoother. A lot smoother. I like that much better. All right. So we'll change this, the stone here, change the tailstock, go to a different size. Logan. Still around, right? You know that they're still uh, Logan is still around, Glenn. Is it? Yeah, man. The Logan family still makes the. I don't know if they make the lathe, Some but I. Things are done right. Yeah, but I know they sell the parts. That I know. They make parts for their these lathes. There must be thousands of them out there. Okay. Give it a push. Love it. So you can see in here, you got a good shot of that. Now we probably ought to increase the speed just a little bit. And that little bit of run out is not ideal, but it's not going to hurt anything. Got that? We'll do the other side. And you notice the RPM is pretty slow. It doesn't have to be very fast. And if you do get chatter, like I did earlier with a carbide, you might try some cutting oil or you might try some kind of a lubricant, but that's all there is to lapping the centers. So it's, it's so important that you have a good start. Once you start this right with good centers, you'll get a good part. Start it without a good center, you could have a problem. So that's our story, and thanks for watching.